Hello and welcome to a New Year's Negan Report is 97 and we are back in full swing. It's Constant here and here is Becky. It's 1997. The little butterfly clips are back in our hairs. Blue eyeshadow. That's true. Bjork is on the radio. Yeah. And Radiohead. And a Radiohead. <laughs> Breathe Pop is in vogue. Let's get to the main news of the week is 85mm and 26mm announcements. Let's start with 85mm. So I'm going to give you a quick recap. Yes, please. A few weeks before the development announcement, we had some customers who was a 35 1.8 lens and got a warranty card of H5 1.2 lens. And some people thought it was a hoax, but then we had a second customer and third customer received those warranty cards. So someone didn't get a memo. Someone now, made a boo-boo. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And then about two or one day before the announcement, already CES started, Nikon released... A press release which talked about shark skin and Skynet and AI and all this, but nothing about actually Nikon's ad equipment. And people thought that's weird because we see some leaked photographs yes. of H5 millimeter lens. So we had those. And then the following day, Nikon came out with a development announcement of H5 millimeter 1.2 and 26 millimeter 2.8 lenses. Now let's talk about H5 first. What do you think, Becky? So, first of all, it's 1.2. As a lot of people predicted, it seems like Nikon is going to go with a set of f1.2 prime lenses. And then the 1.8s, yes. Exactly. What's I, your thoughts on that? You're happy with that? I am happy with that. Looking at the leaked pictures and obviously the picture that was in the press release, it's very difficult to tell how big this lens is at this stage. It does have an 82 millimeter front diameter, which makes me think it's going to be not dissimilar to the 51.2. Well... I can tell you that some internet detectives, they've done some research. Pika, pika. <laughs> and first of all, <laughs> the h 2 millimeter thread is the same as on 51.2. Mm -hmm. Second of all, they did a size comparison. And, well, H5 is a little bit shorter, but we're talking about, like, the projection is it's 15 centimeters for 51.2, and it's about 14.1 centimeter for 85. Mm -hmm. 85 looks a little bit chunkier, but always 85 do look a little bit chunkier. So, yes. but overall, roughly, they look like they're going to be about the same size and weight. Exciting. There's no price. What are your thoughts? Like uh, over 2,000, under 2,000? For sure over 2,000. I predict, and I'm calling it here just, you know, pulling a figure out of my head because I wasn't prepared for this, but I reckon it's going to be about 2,800 because the 51.2 was two and a half or 2,699. Mm -hmm. nine. I think it's 2,3 now or something. Yeah, and it's come down a little bit. And I think that the 85 would inevitably be more expensive. It's an 85 after all. So that's my prediction. That's right. I agree with you. It's, uh, I'm looking at probably 2,6, 2,8, uh, mm -hmm. something like it's 2,799. And you're right, 85 historically were always more expensive than 50. Yes. So we'd expect that to happen the same way. Now, are you prepared to spend some money? Have you put some money aside already? 85 is actually not a focal length I use anymore. I haven't used it since D700 days, apart from when we've done review videos. And I don't know. I don't miss it as a focal length, but I think I could learn to love it. I, I don't think it's one that I would put in my kit bag as a day-to-day. -day. Now, mm. you, however, are a portrait photographer. I just want to say that Becky just bought Leica, so she doesn't have any money. So, but, um, <laughs> I've got no money whatsoever. Um, thanks for that. Um, you're a portrait photographer. Yes, I am. So is this something that you would seriously consider to add to your Z system? If, uh, if you know... Yes and no. I, if I would have the money, then definitely yes. That's, yeah. But the reason I was advocating for 1.4 version is the price. Yeah. And if it's going to be priced at 2800 that is a lot of money for the H5 millimeter lens. And a lot of people say that H518 is a new 1.4 and it's a great lens and it's much better than any of mount versions. Personally, my H5 1.4G, I don't know if I've got a special sample or not, but it's still fantastic. And I Magic. prefer that over Z1.8 lens. And I'm going to keep mine till maybe the moment where I have enough money to get 1.2. But to be honest with you, it's just price will basically make a lot of people to consider something else. And there's a good way to approach it because from one point with a new Nikon Prime lens, I designed the Z glass with no compromises. So mm. they trying to get the best in class. And we had Rob McNeese last Friday. If you haven't seen this live stream, do have a look at that. But something that you didn't see on live stream, he said that he spoke to Nikon designers who designed those 
uh, lens, especially 51.2. Yeah. And he asked him why this lens is so big. And they said specifically that in order for what we want to achieve, the image quality we want to achieve, it has to be this size. And it seems that H5 1.2 literally has the same line of thoughts. We want to design the best lens in this class that will compete with the top lenses in that particular range. Yes. So when we have this, the next one down, unfortunately, is H5 1.8. Yeah. And the price difference is going to be huge if it's at around two and a half, two point eight, while the other one is about, what, 700 pounds or so. Yes. So it's a big price difference. It is. It will definitely benefit a lot of professional photographers who use H5 lenses a lot for fashion photography, studio photography, wedding photography, low light photography, you name it. But it is a lot of money to spend. And if you're looking at, let's say, enthusiasts, again, they're going to think twice in order to buy it. Now, the good news about H5 millimeter lens is that my thinking is that if Z8 is a studio camera, 85 is a good companion. It is. To go with this camera. It makes sense, actually, to look at it from that viewpoint, uh, like releasing the lenses before the camera comes out. That Nikon did a similar thing with the D850, where we saw some of these really stunning lenses being updated and upgraded, mm -hmm. and then the D850 came afterwards and the d800 and the d810 i mean nikon have constantly upgraded and developed their lenses and uh and then came the list of these lenses are actually recommended with this camera if they go high resolution on the z8 a similar thing will happen i think although every z lens will be a recommended lens top notch absolutely yeah. but let's not go to that they just no i would like to talk about the 26 mil though yeah what do you think who is it for it's for me. No, <laughs> the 26 for all of us is incredibly exciting. And I think might get easily overlooked if it comes out at the same time as the 85. But if you look at the size of that thing, it appears to be even smaller than the 28 f2.8 and the 40 mil f2, which were both Nikon's pancake muffin lenses that came out for that kind of compact street photography walkabout size. This looks even smaller. And I'm very excited about that because I think that this could be the way to turn your maybe slightly larger, if you've got a Z6 or a Z7 or a Z5, they're slightly bigger cameras. It's a way to kind of turn those into a stealth street camera without compromising too much on optics because we know that they are very good lenses, even though they're pancakes. Absolutely. It almost looks like those body cup lenses. Mm -hmm. I know Olympus had one and we had a lot of uh, Chinese manufacturers release one and there would be something like at F8 or F11 with a tiny front element. Fixed aperture, yeah. Exactly. But this one is 2.8. Mm -hmm. So it should be a better image quality. It's a little bit bigger than a normal rear cup lens, but smaller than 28 mil. What do you think price wise? Is it going to be more expensive than 28 pancake, which is in UK priced about 250, 260 pounds? Or do you think it's going to be more expensive? Do you think it's going to have a plastic mount or metal mount? If it's a plastic mount like the 28 is, then I think it's going to be pitched at a similar price point. I think it won't be more than 249. Maybe it will be 259 initially and then it will come down a little bit. But uh, I'm hoping it's not going to be more expensive than that. It doesn't make sense to me that it would be. But the question is then why to release this lens? I mean, it, the more the merrier. That's, let's skip this and obviously we welcome this. The question is, if they're priced about the same, what's the point of releasing 26 when the 28 is out? Uh, I agree that it's a strange move. I, I don't disagree with you on that. If it's a metal mount lens then it makes sense because we have had people say, oh, I want the 28 mil. Oh, it's plastic. I don't want it. Now, that might be sort of a little bit snobbish, <laughs> as I would call it. <laughs> and hopefully haven't offended anyone there. I might consider that to be a little bit highbrow uh, to say I'm not going to buy the lens because it's plastic mount. But it is a genuine concern for some people. And if they brought this one out as a metal mount lens, then it could make sense. I have seen Chinese manufacturers make these body cap lenses that are all metal. They're very, very well made, but fixed aperture. This is a little, slightly more complicated thing. What What's your feeling? You think it's going to be more expensive? Well, I think the jury is still up because the price will decide the opinion about this lens, I think, by the general public. If the price is right and it's inexpensive, mm -hmm. Doesn't matter if it's got metal or plastic mount, I think it's going to be well received. But if it's, let's say, it's got a metal mount and it's priced at 500 pounds, mm -hmm. then I personally would think twice. Mm -hmm. You know, I would rather buy a 28 mil personally if it's more, if the 26 is more expensive. Yeah. So let's wait and see when it's going to come out. And the question is, when do you think it's going to come out? With the ZF. No, I'm joking. <laughs> Let's start another rumor. Let's not talk about Z8. Well, you already started the Z there for rumor. Yeah, before, I did. So. I know. I'm terrible. So, do you think if, if 85 is basically tells us 
that Z8 is on the way. The 26 tells us that ZF is coming. And then they're going to do a special edition with the Chrome Wheels. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Special Becky edition. Please with don't the royal take blue. me seriously. They should do one in, in blue just for me. I think that it will probably be summer that we'll see this one. I can't see it coming any later than that. I don't see the point. We, we know the lens exists. Mm -hmm. We've seen it in physical form. Whether or not it will clash with the other announcements that we're hoping will happen sooner rather than later, I'm not sure. But summer at the very latest. Okay, I think it's going to happen early. I think March, where it's at. Well, the development announcement from Nikon suddenly became teasers more than anything else. Mm. Because development announcement was always reserved for the top of the range professional product. And that would be fine with H5 mil lens. But then suddenly you have development announcement 26, which is clearly the flagship of Nikon lens lineup. <laughs> so since it's a new teaser, yeah. effectively, I think we're going to have another month for official press release with a release date and price and more details because at the moment the press release says nothing about both lenses apart of that where they're going to be used let's say 85 for weddings and fashion photographers and 26 for street etc so, it's literally you know. three lines exactly like each press release has three lines so yeah. we don't know anything yeah. beyond that so i think h5 definitely with that eight announcement we're probably going to get a, the price and the release date that's probably will come out on the, day one with that eight again we just speculated at this stage and i think 26 probably around march April this year. Right. All right. Well, let's talk about what didn't happen at CS this year. And that's something that's been rumored by many YouTube channels. Surprisingly, not by the websites. Not by no. us either. <laughs> not by us either. Nikon Rumors didn't report on that. And Nikon Rumors probably is considered more or less knowledgeable into things. I guess running for 10 plus years makes you some contacts yeah. in the industry or something like this. But we never know. But Z8 announcement didn't happen. We also didn't hear anything and to be honest with you i don't see why not to announce z8 in the same way as h5 just do two sentences z8 is in development it's a great camera which is smaller than z9 it, that's it the end the end yeah. exactly wouldn't you know. have killed anyone to do that i don't think but i think that cp plus where it's at and my thinking about this and i could be wrong on this one but maybe because japanese engineers are so proud of their camera that they want to announce a Japanese photography show. That's just my guess. Mm. Look, also looking at the historical announcements of Nikon and CES, we didn't really see a big professional announcement. No, it hasn't really been the platform for that. Yeah. But who knows, it may change as well. What Nikon talked about in their pre official press release at CES, they talked about shark skin or rebuild processing that we've discussed in the past, and that's the coating they apply to the wings of the airplanes, and that just makes the airplanes faster. That's amazing. Fascinating. Exactly. Then they talked about Skynet and robots taking over the world. So they have this robot vision thing that helps in manufacturing of things. And they also talked about the Unreal Ride, which was powered by Mark Roberts motion controls. So everything but Nikon Z, but they launched their website for CES. They also had a Z page on that. So have a look at that. We've included those links below. Lots of future technology and futuristic stuff. Exactly. And if you want to have a look at the pictures from the show, yeah, I had to Nikon Rumors article. They've shared some photographs from the show. It's pretty interesting. Joy of joys. Tell us what you think about new Nikon Z lenses announcements in the comments below. And now let's move on to Nikon firmware updates. Nikon released firmware update for Z9 as well as a bunch of prime lenses. Let's start with Z9. It was a firmware version 3.01. What did they add, Becky? They did all sorts of things. So they've added the MCN10 remote grip compatibility. It can now be used for synchronized release on cameras connected via the 10-pin remote terminal. The MCN10 grip is now shipping. So if you want one, let us know. Next up, they improved focus tracking in AFC mode when the wide area, small or large, or AFC1, C2, etc., are selected for the AF mode. Now, that's a very, very broad, broadly covering point where they said improved focus tracking. So more to speculate on there. That's true. And they also fixed a bunch of following issues and do head into the, the links under the video. So to read all of them. But apparently a lot of people said that there was some autofocus bug that was introduced with version 3 firmware update. And now they fixed it with 301 as well. So some hot fixes there as well. And they also released the firmware for a bunch of firmwares for prime lenses, for 1.8 prime lenses. It's 20 millimeters, 24, 35, 50 and 85 1.8 S lenses. 
they've added literally the same thing, which is linear focusing. So effectively, the lens will behave like an old-fashioned manual focus lens compared to non-linear, where if you would move the focusing ring faster, it will start to refocus faster as well. So this functionality has been added to zoom lenses, 100 to 24-72.8 and 24-120 lenses back last year. So now those additions come into the prime lenses as well, and they've added support of not only Z9, but Z7 II and Z6 II cameras. That's right. Now, if you do need help on setting up linear focus on your Z lenses, then Nikon USA have supplied a handy Jim Dandy video for you on YouTube, which we will link in the description box. Fantastic. Now for some other news. Yeah, so Nikon have actually been granted patents for some new image sensors or patents, depending on what part of the world you are from. So apparently some of the patents or patents... <laughs> <laughs> Should we go with the American or the English? Nikon. I'm going to say patent. The patent was filed originally for a lot of these back in 2021, some in April, some in March. First one up was in April 2021. That was accepted a few days ago. And although it wasn't mentioned in the application, there is a possibility that it is the stacked 4K 17.8 megapixel HDR 1000 frame per second CMOS image sensor. Yeah, so the patent is called Image Sensor and Electronic Camera. Very generic. Very but if that was filed in April, but in March, at the end of March 2021, they actually launched that sensor. We talked about it back in the day. We've been here. Long time. But when we talked about it, so it basically allows full HDR, 4K, 1,000 frames per second. So mm. something we talked about, potentially it may eventually become a camera, a product, but so far we think that it probably will be applied towards industrial applications. Right. But who knows? You never know. So finally, Finally, we've got that patent granted to them. It seems that while Nikon is not producing their sensors, they design them. Yes. So who knows? Maybe eventually Nikon will start to design more sensors and maybe eventually we will start to get away from Sony sensors. Who knows? I mean, that's just my speculation on this, but it's good they, that the patent is granted. It's good that eventually it will become some sort of product, either for industrial or for the consumer market. So we, let's wait and see. But it is an interesting sensor. 1,000 frames per second is nothing to sniff at. No. You know, with full HDR. So who knows? Let's wait and see. Yes. Now, some other news, which is not necessarily Nikon news, but is Nikon related, is that Sigma could be set to announce their first ever Z-mount lens. They've publicized that they are actually holding a press event, their first of this year, and it's scheduled for January the 12th. So we may finally get some official word on the subject of an upcoming lens. That's true. And then Nikon Rumor said that the first lens potentially is Z60 to 600 millimeter lens, which they have an F mount. My gut feeling is that it's not, but I don't know what it is. So, <laughs> yeah, I mean, the, the thing is, from, from the charter, we haven't heard anything. I mean, we, we know that Sigma is coming to that mount. Yes. We know that Sigma are going to be bringing out things for other brands that are mm. not Nikon because we've heard it on the grapevine, but there's no kind of official word on when the, the actual launch date of the Z whatever it is, will be. That's right. And if they do announce the lens, which we're going to find out literally within a couple of days after this podcast is out. So who knows? Then it's going to be pretty amazing. So let's wait and see. And uh, if they're going to announce it on the 12th, that's going to be amazing. Very much so. Awesome. Let's go to Nikon Corp News. That you all love. Nikon continues to buy back their own shares. Every month it was happening since April last year. And so far, they bought 15,105,300 shares, which is equivalent of almost 22 billion yen. That is a lot of yen. As we said, it's almost about 10 pounds or so. Yes. Um, and now you know that. Do with that information what you will. Excellent. Let's move to Germany. Some news from Nikon Germany. You can now test out different Nikon kits. You can order kits, uh, I suppose, to loan them. Yes, to experience them. They call them experience kits. Experience them. And they have things like the Z Trinity kit, which is the F2.8, so 14, 24, 24, 70, 70 to 200, 2.8s. The Z6.2 experience kit, the Z5 experience kit, the Z50 experience kit. All the kits all the options. We're going to include a link for you yeah. so you can have a look there. And you know what? It comes with a lovely Pele experience case, which has an experience form where it asks you about your experience with a Nikon experience kit. Experience. Experience. <laughs> All right, let's move back to Japan. Map cameras. 
and independent yeah. Japanese dealers of cameras and lenses from all manufacturers published their best-selling cameras as well as the best-selling lenses of the year. We did that on our live stream. We did. A couple of weeks ago, so do check this one out. But let's see. That was see. just Nikon, and that was just us. Exactly. So let's just talk about Nikon. Who cares about other brands? So in fourth place. <laughs> so don't care if Sony A7 IV got the first place. Who cares? No, and we don't care that Olympus and Canon got yeah. second and third place. Well, the place. funny thing is Olympus only one mm. is on the second place. This is puzzling to me because if your company is sold to someone else, yeah. me as a consumer think that I don't have really trust with this company anymore because I don't know who owns them. That, that would be me. Yes, but... I think that the people that buy OM1s are not necessarily looking at that corporate news that we look at. Yeah. I have a question to our viewers. What do you think about Hasselblad being owned by DJI? Obviously, it's a very similar situation. While Hasselblad has been independent and all the manufacturing in Sweden, so nothing changed there, mm. it's still owned by DJI. Yes. What are your thoughts on that? Olympus system is basically very similar to that. Yeah. So that's why it was puzzling to me. As a, like personally, I like I would be a little bit concerned. Let's say if AliExpress buys Nikon, I would be a little bit concerned if you see what I mean. It's uh, nothing to do with other company owning, but more like well, things may change. Yes. Although I think that's probably the minority of consumers that would have that concern. In my opinion, maybe our viewers will. I think say our viewers are exactly these consumers that I'm talking about. I will. I will stand yeah. corrected if that's the case. Yeah. But tell us what you think and let's move on to the fourth place. Oh, yes, fourth place was the Nikon Z9. So whoop, whoop, uh, well done, Nikon. Then sixth, seventh and eighth place we don't care about. Uh, ninth place was the Nikon Z6 II. This kind of unbiased and objective news we give you. Uh, well, you, I can t say them if you want. <laughs> I mean... But it's interesting. So Nikon is not doing so great in the motherland of Japan. But then if you look at the lenses, the Nikon 24 to 120 is on the first place of best-selling lenses. And surprise, surprise, the 40 Muffin AK Pancake F2 lens is on the second place, which is incredible. Yes. If you like the full rankings, we're going to include the link in the description box so you can go see all the ones we didn't mention. All right, let's move on to third. Party News 7 Artisans announce a new 12 millimeter wide angle 2.8 DX lens for Nikon Z mount. It's only priced at $150 and it fills the gap of the wide angle lenses, which Nikon hasn't produced so far and hopefully they will release something there. But in the meantime, $150 is pretty good. Absolute bargain and it only weighs 300 grams. So if you are looking for a 12, which will be the equivalent of a an 18 millimeter on your Z30, Z50 or ZFC, then this might be one to look at for you. Fantastic. And then a cousin of Seven Artisans, which is TT Artisan, announced a 50mm f2 lens in silver. So that one is full frame lens, priced at $69. Nice. And you can buy it at their website. Can't really go wrong with that. We also have first reviews coming in, including our own, of the upcoming new tech art TZM02, which is the like an M mount to Nikon Z mount adapter. So if you have any M mount lenses lurking around, whether they be Voigtlander or Leica or whatever, you can now put them straight onto your Z camera, completely autofocus. All right, so they did have a first version mm -hmm. of that adapter, which was fairly slow. Now, remember that Leica lenses are not autofocus lenses to start with. Correct. So effectively what this adapter does, it's moving the plane. It's not rotating the actual focusing ring. It's moving the adapter plane forward or backwards. And that's what shifts the focus. Now, the new version, which we've tested ourselves, the pre-production model, definitely performs a lot a lot better. So it's available from their website. If you're interested in that, do have a look at the reviews that we've uh, put in the description below, but we also have a look at our video as well. Yes, which you're going to include a link for. Now, another manufacturer called Case that manufactures filters, they released a special magnetic tempered filter kit for Nikon Z1424 lens. Mm. That one is available from Amazon. Do buy that if you want to. But for me, the probably the top announcements of the end of last year was Pentax Rico announced a film project. Yes. Where they haven't announced any cameras, but they said that we definitely want to come back to them and we're thinking of launching three cameras in three different price points, but also talking about bringing all those guys that retired when they switched to digital, bring them all back and teach all the youngsters 
how to fix those cameras. So it won't just bring the new camera, cameras to the market, but it also will provide the support to all this old secondhand gear lying around, which is, I think is incredible. And I personally hope that if they release something that is not, let's say, 35 pound point and shoot camera, but something a little bit more professional and manual, I would definitely spend money on it. What do you think, Becky? I agree with you. If they bring out something that's reasonably high end without it costing, uh, you know, like a M6 price, then definitely going to be interesting to a lot of us film photographers. I'm actually really excited to see what they do if it does go ahead, because I think the popularity is there. We've already established there's still a massive film community. And although there's a couple of you who maybe aren't that interested in film, there are still plenty of us who are. Okay, so let's talk about the basic film cameras, K1000, which mm -hmm. probably would be equivalent to something like Nikon FM series cameras. Sure. So if you look at prices like this, obviously it's going to be manufactured at much smaller quantities. And because you need to basically create a completely new line, you don't have all the old parts lying around. Mm -hmm. It will be expensive, but it's not going to be like M6 price. Like M6 prices in the UK about four and a half thousand. So I think that one would be priced at around thousand pounds. Yes. So the question is for you and the community, would you spend a thousand pounds on a brand new Pentax film manual camera or would you just buy a secondhand K1000? Because that's where a lot of people say, I want film back, but I don't want to pay the prices. And obviously because community is much smaller, mm -hmm. everything's becoming more expensive to produce because you don't produce the same volume. Indeed. What are your thoughts? As someone who has what could be considered too many film cameras, I would be on the fence a little bit about this if it were that kind of price point. Obviously, they've said they're going to look at maybe three different options. And the beauty of manufacturing a brand new film camera and making parts available for it really is the longevity factor more than anything. There are cameras out there, and in fact, we have this conversation almost on the daily with people who are using Nikon Fs and F2s who, if the meter goes wrong or something goes wrong with it, it's much harder to get repaired. Not everything is impossible to get repaired, but there are some larger sort of repair jobs that need to be done that can only be done by cannibalizing from another camera. Yeah, it's a very important point. But yeah, and so although we all love beautiful old things that, that kind of have a bit of history to them, sometimes it is impractical, particularly if you're starting out as a film photographer. We've had people who bought, you know, FMs or FEs off place, not from us, but from other places, who find out after a couple of weeks or months of use that one of the dials has come off or one of the springs has come loose or something and you can't get those fixed. So it's nice to see this kind of revamp, if only because it means that for future generations, we will still have film cameras available. Absolutely. I think the point of cannibalizing another camera to say one, and that basically shows the lack of parts availability because they're no longer produced. If we now have the camera that uses similar parts and we can reuse them, that, for example, like M6 mm. that's been reissued, we'll make sure that the parts will be available for the older Leicas that were introduced and in, produced in the 90s. Yeah. And that makes a big difference in terms of Huge repairs, et cetera, et cetera. So tell us what you think about this. The interesting video that I would recommend you is by Nico's photography show who does a lot of good stuff for film community. He has a video which is called Pentax launching the film camera project's opinion. Uh, have a look at that and tell us what you think. Yes. Now moving on, Small Rig have announced a new line of products uh, which actually have a hidden Apple AirTag compartment in them. So if your camera gets nicked, you can track it and hunt them down, beat them up. Do you use their tags? No, I actually use tiles. The same? Yeah. Because they just came out earlier, so I bought them before the yeah. air tag came so, out. So unfortunately, mine are all square, not circular, mm. which is a shame. But if you're one of the sort of slightly newer adopters and have Apple air tags, this is quite a cool way to do it. Yeah, so so far they launched the two products. The first one is just a kind of Arca Swiss plate, which has a compartment for the air tag. And another one is a little case, which you can attach to a video cage. So you can do something like this. Uh, they're available on pre-order directly from Small Rig website. So head over to there or your local Amazon. Let's move on to reviews. We have first review is by yours truly, Bacon Constant. Us. Yes. We reviewed Z400 at 4.5 VR S lens. We did. And we liked it. 
and yeah. we posted a video about it on our YouTube channel. So but, yeah, but you call it super sharp. I did. I like the pictures. Pictures came out really well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, images were very very impressive from that one, and we had more than we could put in one video on that one. So there will be another video on some other comparisons in a couple of weeks' time. The second video review that we will recommend you is called Nikon MC N10 Remote Grip, not just for video. So basically, it runs through the functionality of the grip and also the use of it. A really interesting review for people who still don't understand what it's used for. I think it's a good explanation of the device. That's right. Now, moving on to your weekend read and watch section, we have a new kid on the block. Yeah, new series. New series from Nikon. They've yeah. introduced Nikon Sessions. Uh, this is a brand new series by Nikon Europe and they it's hosted by the very lovely Rishi Scherer from yeah. Rishi Talks. He's become a true showman. He has. Um, so this series, the idea behind it is that it'll encompass everything there is to, to love about photography uh, and the whole process of image creation. They are going to be releasing episodes fortnightly and the first episode, episode one, features music photography with Scarlett Page, Sherlane Forrest, Connor McDonald and Pep Bonnet. Yeah, I would like to have a tonight show with Richie Scherer. Yeah. Or The Late Show. Or Saturday Night Live. Saturday Night with Richie Scherer. Or, <laughs> or the Nickelodeon Graham, with Richie The Graham Richie Norton Scherer. show with <laughs> Richie. <laughs> I would like to see everything with Richie Scherer. Yeah, we should just have him in everything. Exactly. Um, At the uh, cooking show. The, co yeah, the great British, British Bake Off with Richie <laughs> Scherer. <laughs> we could go on, but the short version is go and have a look at that check out the first episode um, you can also see the schedule of what's coming up next next episode two is going to be urban and street photography with leon neil benmore and perry gibson um, keep an eye out for that because it looks set to be a lot of fun the next one up is live camera chart with us and the head of Nikon Professional Services in UK, aka NPS, Rob McNeese. If you have missed that last week, do check it out as well. He, in that live stream, talked about robotic arms yes. being used at the World Cup. And he's been, as a part of Nikon Service Center in Qatar for the World Cup itself. Now, if you want to know more about robotic camera system that's been used by Associated French Press, and other press photographers. Have a look at that video and article on DP Review, specifically on Mark Roberts' motion controls. But we've got more. There's a lot of homework for you this week. Yes, you've got the 1001 Nights number 84. This is the first line of fast wide angle lenses for the Nikon F AI 35mm F2 by Koichi Oshita. Now, that takes a look at the 35 F2, which had the same basic optical structure as the Auto 35 F2. Yeah, and apparently they say it was one of the kind of longest best-selling lens for them. So now I'm over 35 1.4 person, so I've used that. I don't have experience with F2. Did you have experience with that lens? Not with the manual focus version. With the autofocus version, yes, I did. It's a very nice lens indeed. Fantastic. And the last one, we've got some custom painted Nikons for you. Uh, they are painted by Adrian Prada. He's got his Instagram and his article on Nikon Rooms. Don't they look lovely? I know some Delicious. of you won't find them particularly exciting, but I think there's always a place for nice custom paint job. Yeah, they no they do look really nice. I think that the color schemes that he picks just a little bit different and kind of set them apart from other custom jobs. That's right. And if you're like us and have too much equipment, then I'm sure you can send one camera for custom paint job. Potentially. And that's a wrap. Thanks for watching now this week. Yes, thank you very much for watching and or listening. Please give us a like and a subscribe if you're on YouTube, a follow, a rating, even maybe a review if you're on a podcast platform. Yeah, did you know that we are available on Apple Podcasts, Amazon Music and Spotify, all those good platforms for podcasts. We're available in high definition, so do check us out there if you don't want to watch the show on YouTube. Good. If you'd like to find us on the internet, I am on Instagram at Rebecca underscore Danese. The shop is at Nikon at Grays. And I'm at Constantine Koshkin. There you go. We will see you next week. Bye-bye.